And opening day of upsets at the HSBC Women's Sydney Sevens leaves us with a series of enticing quarterfinal matchups on day two. Leg three has already tossed up plenty of intrigue at Spotless Stadium, and now eight teams remain in the hunt for the Cup trophy on a series that takes us around the world. The season started at a new host venue, Glendale, Colorado, and a perfect start for New Zealand. Portia Woodman showing a lot of fitness. Back-to-back -back scores for her. Oh Ruby Tui's there. Portia Woodman's there. Ruby Tui said, you go have it, number 11. You go eat some. The champions, New Zealand. To the traditional stop in Dubai, where once again, the Kiwis were unstoppable. Broughton extends the lead for New Zealand. Teresa Fitzpatrick, one way then the other, and finds Nathan Wong. That might be the one for New Zealand. The Dubai Sevens trophy back in the hands of the New Zealand team once more. Leg three takes us down under to Sydney and the sizzling southern summer. And then in April, it's off to the port city of Kitakyushu, Japan, our Olympic hosts in 2020. The ever-popular Langford Canada event is the penultimate stop on the tour as the race for the title heats up. And then we finish in France and the coastal city of Biarritz to determine our series champions. So after two events, this is how the points table stands. New Zealand perfect, two from two, the opening two tournaments. New Zealand, Canada, USA and Australia highlighted in gold. The top four places at the end of the season will earn automatic qualification to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. But already you can see France, Russia chasing hard. The pool standings from day one, New Zealand winning all of their three pool games, beating France, who were the second place team out of Pool A. It was a disappointing day for England, and PNG had some great moments in their return to the series. Ireland topping Pool B, what a performance from them, bouncing back after a first up draw against Russia. Canada started so well, but then dropped their second two games. And in Pool C, wins two apiece for Australia, USA and Spain. It was as tight as anything, seven points each, meaning Spain goes through to the quarterfinals as one of the best third place teams. So our quarterfinal draw, number one, New Zealand against Canada, a repeat of the Dubai final at the last leg of the series. Russia against the USA in quarterfinal two. Ireland aiming for their first ever semi-final appearance if they can get past Spain. And then the hometown team, Australia, taking on France, the team that knocked them out of Rugby World Cup sevens. They will progress, the losers will go back down into the other side of the draw for the fifth place semi-finals. The winners of semi-final quarterfinal one and two rather we go through to the semis and on to the cup final and the bronze medal match our DHL impact player so far French player Shannon Izard there at the top carrying hard along with the likes of Michaela Blyde, Lena McAltsova always there or thereabouts on our DHL impact player list. The Russian captain is so important to everything that team does. We begin with the Challenge Trophy semi-finals. England, who after starting the season well, eighth in Glendale, sixth in Dubai, will be disappointed not to have reached another quarter-final here this weekend. They were in a very tough pool with New Zealand and France, but just couldn't quite get it done. You'll see they're down to four players on the bench. That is because the veteran Claire Allen is out with suspension. Put a hand up, knew she got it wrong. Abby Brown, the captain. Helena Rowland and Emma Uren, two of the youngsters. Are very exciting. Number four for PNG, Fatima Rama, scored a sensational try against New Zealand yesterday, but she is out with injury, so that is a bit of a blow. Well, it takes all sorts to come to the Sydney Sevens, and one of them's Nolly Waterman, the former England captain, alongside me. England need to respond really well today. Yeah, they'll be really disappointed with their performance yesterday. The tackle, tackle completion of 67%, you just can't win games against the top teams. Um, however, for me, a highlight was Megan Jones coming back from a really significant injury, doing a huge shift in defence, especially against New Zealand. Um, so it's great to see her back in the white shirt.
And we know PNG, well, they scored that quite brilliant try against New Zealand yesterday. They've had good success rate when they've gone on to attack. Yep, 100%. Two visits, two tries. That's cracking. And the, the try was against no slouch. It was Michaela Blythe that was chasing her down when Rama got the score. So, and an impressive dive to finish. So the first of the Challenge semi-finals, England against Papua New Guinea. A little signal round the back. Conditions a little breezy. Rain has been falling. They'll need to be sharp on their skills. Holly Aitchison. Gets this first match underway, nicely taken down by PNG as the England captain Brown come barreling in. PNG with first attacking play, England some really strong moments defensively. They know that PNG can break out, they've got some flyers in their team. Taken in by Cassandra Sampson, one of the Australian based players, but the penalty for holding on too long. And there is the player that Molly mentioned, Megan Jones, heavily into the action through the hands of Abby Burton. Scooped up by Aitchison. It's just a bit untidy for England at the moment. Now they clear Roland, Fleming rather, receiving from Aitchison. So strong. Deborah Fleming eventually taken into ground and Aitchison looks to clear. Working the left side. There is rolling into the action and now Emma Urien, she is a flyer if she gets half a chance. Well looked after by the PNG defence. Kawa taking her down around the ankles. Aitchison, Jones again. She's been so busy. Jones gets the hands free. They all wanted a piece of it. Abby Brown got her hands to it too, but it's the playmaker Holly Aitchison, who scores first for England. Really nice patience, calm play from England. Megan Jones does the business, she takes the ball to the line, she sucks in the defenders here. They're queuing up, like you say, but it's Holly Aitchison that gets over for the first five. Conversion is good as well. So England take first blood against PNG through Holly Aitchison. You can see it is slippy out there. The girls' passing techniques have changed. They're going for a push pass rather than a big, long spin pass, which potentially could shorten their attack up, but they did well to keep hold of the ball and get that score. Rain shower came across the ground during the last of the men's matches. We saw Fiji. Pretty greasy cutting through as Gemma Schnobelt as she got the pace to get there. Aitchison's coming across in cover. Schnobelt might go 80 metres here. Just taken to the ground, up over the 22. Brilliant breakout by Gemma Schnobelt. Now PNG swinging hard onto attack. England's defence have got back. Got back in their line. Taking it up through the middle is the captain, Rapila. And they're going to give away a penalty, England. Getting in over the ball. Emma Uren. And Rapila just held on too long. England looked to counter, counter quickly. Jones, big wide ball. Is good. So Fleming tidies up. Looked like it was a way forward, but way on is the call. Burton. Still going, Abby Burton, the 18-year-old. PNG have got a player down in back play, trying to get back in the line now. Aitchison with room to roam. Sizing up the options and laying it off for Yuren, in and out. Taking on Parola, stepping inside. Emma Yuren with the slippery footwork. Strong finish from Emma Uren. In and out from Holly Aitchison. Interests the outside defender, which gives Uren 
a little bit of work to do, but she's got pace. There we see the outside defender step in. Nice jink around the edge defender. Not easy to do that footwork, is it, in conditions like that? Really had to stop, put on the brakes, and then go again. Emma, you're in. Oh, conversion's good too, so England double the lead, 14 points to nil. Just over two minutes to go in the first half. Shallow with the restart this time, Aitchison Kaore underneath it, had vision all over the top of her and it's there for Jones again. This time she goes straight up through the middle, Megan Jones, Ward on the outside from Fleming, too easy for England. They score in quick succession. Decent set piece there from England. Much better kick placement from Holly Aitchison. It meant that Abby Burton could get up underneath it, tap it back. You can see the triangle of support there, Megan Jones regathering it. Thought she might go herself, but unselfishly gives it to the speedster. England have come out really strongly on day two. Deborah Fleming, uh, their key try scorer, is always there, cranking up the list of England's all time try scorers now, closing in on Heather Fisher. Starts worked well and Kaore couldn't handle but bounces back quickly, too quickly for Amy Wilson Hardy. First knock on against PNG. Just gets her body under it too much, doesn't give her space uh, to put the ball into her arms. And lucky Amy Wilson Hardy had done the hard work to get there, and I think she, it, it came at her a little bit too quickly. Might have been the mini Five. Falcon in there too, could have got some. Plonk on the nose. To be cold out. Scooped up nicely by Helena Rowland. And some hard yards for England. Fleming Aitchison tried to get the step on, but it was well read by the PNG defence, Melanie Kawa. The more experienced players. Here's Rowland again now with some space. Wilson Hardy with the chop back and field. They show to the sideline, trying to rip in there. Cold eight. gives away a penalty though. England want one more before half time. Burton, Eddie Burton slips a nice ball to Roland getting on the outside. A despairing dive from Kaore. And Helena Roland goes in the corner for England. Good support there from Helena Roland. Abby Burton is a big, strong ball carrier. She quite often will break the first line of defence or at least get in behind the, uh, the tackler. She gets her arms free and she has a support player. This is where you want your teammates. There we go. Little slip pass and she's away down the wing. She hasn't been able to get enough hands on ball. It's PNG. Nice little breakout. But England exerted their dominance, used their experience. Aitchison out wide. Oh, that's a lovely kick from Holly Aitchison inside the left hand upright. They're going up at multiples of seven, and England go to the half time break. 28 points to nil. Okay, but it's a couple of small errors that are keeping them in the game. Defensively, a lot better shape, 
Okay, but we're just falling off tackles because we're grabbing. Chop them, go low, get a shoulder on. Let's break the girls and put Let's some go. points on them. Just for Let's one change, you'll end up a Debbie for now. Let's go, Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Some interesting tactical information there from James Bailey asking the girls to tackle bounce. He wants them back in the game. He wants them to be putting pressure on these PNG players. Um, some nice positivity as well from Titchens for the PNG girls. Uh, making one substitution, but just saying, you know, let's, let's have the confidence to try and get the score in this game. England 28, 28 points to nil as PNG start the second half. Drizzly rain around Spotless Stadium. That's nicely taken down by Burton. It's a little bit of little discipline and offside as well. PNG. So England will get another penny. The advantage was over just as the pass was thrown and landed into the hands of Roland. Well, landed out of the hands of Roland. This is the referee called advantage over. I think she got a little bit keen, took her eyes off the ball. It didn't give herself space to catch it. Unfortunate, Eric, there was some, some nice build-up play with the penalty advantage. Find. Opportunity here for PNG to attack. Got options out to the right, ball squirted out the back of the scrum, and it's right they go, trying to build something. There's Gemma Schnobelt. She was the one who made the great breakout in that first half. And they'll try and use it through Yolanda Gittins onto the field in Jersey 12 for PNG straight up through the middle, hard running. Quarula. There's a wrestle on the ground for the ball, and it's going to be England blowing in over. Good counter ruck from the England forwards. And you just see how that ball is slippery. Tucker. Another penalty against Papua New Guinea. And England want to be able to dictate the pace of this game going in and out and one way in the other is Fleming. Ah, can't link up with Wilson Hardy though. Time off, three white and six subs. Number three, number six. I think England need to make sure there's a few passes going down that they focus on their basic goals, skills. Subs. I would have thought number ten. Debs Fleming there would have subs. put her head back head down and, and, and try to go for the line to create a positive collision. PNG had just seemed to not be controlling themselves around the breakdown. It might be a fatigue thing, it might be slightly naivety in terms of what England are doing. Sets. But it's restricting the amount that they can actually play. Ball is cleared away by Lavai, the gutsy little playmaker for PNG. Just a little bit confused on the options there, though. Holding on to the ball well. England again ripping in. Aitchison it was, he's earned them a turnover That's and a penalty. PNG off their feet. Matthews, Alex Matthews out there. Celia Kwanza as well for England. She's the runner, tried to change direction. Aitchison, ball in two hands, confused. The Papua New Guinea defence all ends up having a good game. Holly Aitchison goes in for her second. Nice trademark play from Holly Aitchison. She glides when she's got the ball in hand. A really nice dummy. She shows the ball and then got the acceleration to go through the gap. But that's quite a tired PNG defence. They have been working hard for this game. Papua New Guinea, the invitational team here for the third straight year. The focus is very much on the qualifiers in Hong Kong in April. That's what new coach Paul Titchens is working towards and this is all experience that helps them towards that understanding they've got a new skills coach as well so developing those areas Holly Aitchison converts her own try and it's not just necessarily the playing it's the it's the videos that they will take home and learn from um, and use as feedback to develop as a team and as units and also as individuals Knock on from the restart by Papua New Guinea. Ladies, just making sure we're going to 
Titchens, the new Papua New Guinea coach, son of Sir Gordon. Find with the Samoan men, of course. Cleared away by Roland Jones. Roland gets it back again and puts the foot down. Ball in two hands again. It's a beautiful pass out to Lizzie Adam, who's got pace to burn. On debut this weekend, Lizzie Adam, her first touch of the match, and she'll go in under the posts. Nice to see Adam, Adam there accelerating set-piece play. A little bit of naivety from PNG in their defence. But Roland put the hammer down, got on the outside, which gave Adam the space. Lizzie Adam, new to this team, just 20 years of age. Did it again. Six from six in front of the, the sticks. Oh. Oh, the H racking up the points. 42 points to nil now. Always a challenge when you change your kicker when Holly H has gone off the field. We've got Roland stepping in, but she's got the fatigue in her lungs and in her legs and just overcooked that. Tap on halfway, Papua New Guinea into the final two minutes of the match now. Trying to build from inside their own territory. Kaiva Love taken down Kaore. Driving them forward. Not too far though. Yeah, extra roll. So England will look to go and go quickly, catching the Papua New Guinea defence off guard. Is Jones again? She got the pace to get there, not this time. Good chase back by PNG. Another penalty. Really racking them up now, Papua New Guinea. And this is going to be an easy score for England in the corner through Celia Kwanza. Great initial break from Megan Jones. And then a quick tap from Helena Rowlands in and away for Kwanzaa. you have just seen, as we spoke about, not necessarily understanding the laws at the breakdown, getting it a little bit wrong, ball in hand and also defensively. And England are able to capitalise no, on the ball. The now. Celia Kwanzaa been a nice addition to this England team as well. Looks like she's gone 10 rounds with Adams. Big old black eye. It's one to be proud of, isn't it? Kickers away. England now 47. Papua New Guinea nil. It is. It's a beauty. Get under the kick off, just held on to it. You're in. Huda goes for full time, and Lizzie Adam wants another one. Spotted the gap, sized up the options. The youngster took it upon herself to grab one more for England, and they'll bring up a half century of points in this Challenge Trophy semi final. Nice smile there from Lizzie Adam for a nice finish. Spotted the gap, and has got the pace to accelerate through the gap. She's come from touch, so she's a good ball player but she's clearly got the pace as well to do some damage on this sevens field. She looked like she was contemplating a big dive or a slide, wasn't quite sure, and then just finished it neatly. A little look up to the big screen. Good, I, good display from England. Yeah, I think she was smiling for the camera as well. One for the scrapbook. 54 points to nil. England run out comfortable winners over Papua New Guinea. We'll go through putting away the disappointment of day one and we'll go through to the challenge trophy decider. Well, let's go down and get some reaction pitch side with Nat Yanidis. Yeah, I've got Emma Uren with me down here. Emma, fantastic win today. It was an indifferent day yesterday, but the girls really came out to play. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, I mean, we always want 
day one to go better, but we knew that we had to come out fighting. And day two, we didn't want to treat it any different. We had to, the first game, day one, like day two, is so crucial. We want to come out and prove that. Obviously, this is a really young side. Just how important is it to get wins on the board, regardless of whether it's pool matches, cup matches, or challenge trophy games? It's just getting everyone on the field. The more we're out here, the more we game time we get, the more experience we get again. And I think getting everyone out here in these games as well, we're getting everyone minutes, and we're just enjoying it all together, which is really, really important. Well, congratulations on the win. Thank you so much. Good win for England to go through to the challenge trophy final. Those fans will... Need to get on their feet shortly. Their team's going to be up next as we move on to see who will play England. Let's hand you over to Tiana Penatani and Simon Ward. Good afternoon, Ricky. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, England getting through to the Challenge Trophy final in Sydney once again. Is it going to repeat the feat? Are Fiji going to be the opposition? We shall find out over the next quarter of an hour. Fiji up against China. Two teams that know each other pretty well this season. One apiece, they've won. There's the Fijian lineup, familiar lineup there from Coach Sayasafuli. And similarly, China going with the same seven that we've seen so far. Tiana Penatani alongside me. Two teams that are really looking to find some feel good in day two. They struggled on day one. Yeah, absolutely. It's unfortunate when you finish at the bottom of your pool for both of these teams, but a big match ahead of them. The winner of this game, obviously, coming up against uh, strong-looking England. But I think the biggest standouts for me on day one for Fiji, having to be number seven, Rusila Nagasau, seven tackles, four offloads. Luis Tisolo was instrumental in their performance as well. But they showed us 89% strike rate yesterday, so nine visits in the 22. Um, and eight tries coming out of that. They do have the potential. They showed glimpses of hope when they did have the ball in hand, but unfortunately just turning over the ball too much. And China, they look strong as well. The likes of Chen Kuiyi and Liu Xiaoqin, their top try scorer. So it, I think it'll be quite an even matchup leading into this game. Yeah, for Fiji, the frustration is they don't manufacture enough opportunities because we've seen shoots of absolute brilliance from them that we know is innate but it's manufacturing the things in the middle third of the pitch to allow those strike opportunities near the 22. Yeah, that's right. And a poor defensive effort as well let them down yesterday. 58% tackle completion. That's not good enough um, at this stage on the World Series. So both of these teams really needing to make their tackles. We know that they're, they're good with the ball in hand. So we'll see what happens in the next 14 minutes. Sakuraku Kawasaki, the lady on the whistle for this one. Looks like the rain has just abated about, but it will be a greasy surface, no question of that. And it may make handling a little bit limited for these two combatants. Second Challenge Trophy semi-final for 2019 underway. Take in from Chen Kuri. One of the standout players for China yesterday. She really did not stop. Lost your chance. Another one. Just have that dynamo quality to their game that keeps them going and going. Yan Mei Ling similarly just leading the team from the front. Good tackle coming through from Lavin Lavinia Tinai there. Yeah, that's terrific urgency from the get-go there from Tinai. They've obviously identified that China are trying to spread that ball out wide. And they're just sending shooters up in the line. Got a lot of urgency and a lot of line speed. They'll look to gain from this. Problems there for Luisa Tisolo. Quite sure what the contact was, but thankfully she's able to retake her position. Fiji, who started yesterday with that loss against Canada, really won in the game. 36-12, the final score. But Fiji's shown two brilliant tries towards the end of it continue that formula Five. the game against Russia 21-12 that was an outstanding performance and then just couldn't get over the line against the Irish 24-19 that was one of the better games of yesterday so the Fijiana trying to get into forward gear as early as possible and Maria Rongitha just snooping around the short side but in the end Fiji working it wide Mamasi Inviting Sokonawasa, one of the debutants this weekend for the Fijiana. Keeping width in their position. The transfer is good. Savu 
Sabu well, taking the contact and then getting rid of the ball. When she had the winger, Nanga Sal was just hanging wide there. Fiji go again. To Solo. Out wide to Rongitha. Well, defiant defence from China already and bearing dividends. Yeah, great body height at the ruck there from China to get that turnover. Fiji showed little glimpses of hope again, shifting the ball from edge to edge, but just had a little brain snap. Should have just taken that into contact. The ball is wet. Those 50-50 offloads aren't going to come off if you don't have eye contact with the player that you're offloading to. Or conversely, to take to bring the player up and just open the door for your wing winger there. You had a two-on-one in a five-metre channel. How many kids work that? Just get the ball out to out to winger early, and you've got the you've got the advantage, surely. I know it's wet ball, but that's uh, pretty much simple stuff that kids are doing across the world right now. Yan Mei Ling with the line out. China looking to get their attack into early gear. Nice little layoff from Curie. And it's whisked out to Xiao Chan. Xiao Chan scored two tries in that opening yesterday. Xiao good pace as well. Trying to load up this left hand side. There she is again. Meiling trying to keep the momentum in this move. Good width on the passing from China. Gao Yaoying gets the offload. And China managing the ball well. Trying to work the opportunity for Yang Meiling. Lays it back into Gu Yao Yao. But the handle just letting them down as they hit the 22. So unlucky there for China. They stayed patient. They were earning the right to drive themselves up the field. Just taking the ball into contact, resetting. And you can see there, Gu Yao Yao just struggled to hold the ball in contact, looking for that offload again, trying to force that extra pass when all they needed to do was just recycle the ball one more time. They had Fiji on the back foot in defence. Uh, China just running out of a little bit of patience there, but... You can see the build-up, you can see the progression really happening through their game. Two years out, of course, as a core cool team, won Hong Kong last April, which means they're back in the mix this year, this Mark season. Is Mark is here. Put up. No, back For Fiji, well, talking to uh, Sayasi Fuli, their new head coach, he said they've got to aim for top eight. Now, having finished fourth 2017, it looked like everything was progressing well for them. Didn't quite happen. Ninth finish last season highlights the inconsistencies that were in their game. And they've just got to try and find that regular momentum throughout this season. One. Change Number one. from the bench already, Meruai Thumu. Like she's replacing Lavinia Tinai there in the forwards. Plenty of Fijian support around the stands. Wonderful to see. Such a unique ingredient into the HSBC 7 series. Male or female, it doesn't really matter. They just add some. It's almost a beat to them. A pulse. China working hard to up their pulse and up their game. Ah, the pass not quite working out again. The slippery ball just falling away from the fingertips. Yeah, that'd probably be China's third unforced error in this first half. They've got the right idea with attack. They're taking the ball forward. They're engaging the players, but just trying to push those long passes means those outside players need to just maybe shift in a couple more metres to make that pass a little less hard to get. Just need to narrow the attack a bit to make sure that those passes are sticking. You just set them done when their instinct is to get the width on their attack. But play to the conditions, play to the opposition. Fiji struggling to get away from their own 22. 
Di Solo. Doesn't throw the 50-50 pass. And Massey has a look out to that left flank, trying to release Soko Iwasa. Akanisi Soko Iwasa. Oh, good strength. Look like Sho Chan was like a human backpack there. But suddenly the break is there, and suddenly Fiji busts through. And that patience pays off as they stride away for the first try. And they Thumu, impact player off the bench, doing the job. Sheer determination there from Meruwai Sumu. There were five Chinese defenders in that picture. She saw the space open up between that BNC defender, no communication, disjointed, and Sumu saw the opportunity to put her head down and go straight for the try line. Well, Thumu, an 800 metre champion at school, so she's still got that range of athleticism on the sevens pitch, showing it a great effect for her country there. And that looks to be the final play of the first half. We've had to wait a long time for the score, but those Fijian fans are happy because at the break they lead seven points to nil. to the Fijiana, of course, being assistant head coach to Gareth Babel on the men's side. And if he can build the belief through his charges now in the female Fiji version, who knows what's possible for the Fijiana through the course of the, the rest of this season, of course, and beyond. So the solitary try from Meruai Thumu, the only score thus far. Can China change the flow in these final seven minutes? Sabu, plenty of time to weigh up the option. Lovely little offload, but there's no room on that short side. Working it beautifully into the hands of Rongitha. Offside call allows Fiji to work away from their 22 and build up the momentum, straightening up as Nangasau. The offload not quite going to hand for Tosolo. No yeah. Number a, a balmy eight. day here in Sydney, but the, the rain and the humidity is always going to make handling difficult. Yeah, that's right. Good pressure, though, from the Chinese defence. They tactically kick the ball a lot deeper, knowing Fiji would most likely force an error before they could get into China's 22. But Nangasau, we spoke about her pre-match. Plenty of line breaks Bye. yesterday and today, but just unfortunate not to get that offload away. China go exploring down the left with Yu Shou-chan. Out to her teammate Chen Kyuri. Working hard, but that's good cover defence from Fiji. Very quick to realise the danger down their right flank. Yeah, they obviously identified that speed down on the right edge and a great cover tackle there from Musa Tisolo. 
so determined in the support there two Fijian players knowing that the Chinese have so much speed down that edge it was a combination of Naimasi and Tusolo determined to get them in into touch and again quickly up the defensive line off that line out hacking the ball clear China having to scuttle back deep into their own half. No, platform. The ruck is formed and Fiji not abiding by the offside line or by the handling, of course, on Mark the floor here. there. Mark is here. These two have already met twice this season. Fiji in the same spot at Glendale had a, a win 17-14 but China came back in Dubai to take the semi-final 12-10 that gives you a fair indicator of how tight this game is going to be Meiling with the line out untidy ball and allows Fiji defenders to get up into the face of the ball handler. Got to hold the discipline around the breakdown though. High tackle call is going to give China the chance to get away from that 22. A lucky call there with the high tackle but Fiji have been relentless in their defense. The Chinese just struggling to get that ball away and again the pass just not hitting the target and allowing Fiji to get right up and force their opposition to go again from inside their 22 and go again they do the break is on Yang Shu one of their debutants stay strong Uh, Massey coming through very quickly, but the little offload from uh, Kyori doesn't find the target. China have to reboot their attack again. Kyori weighs up the options. Meli gets the call on her shoulder from Yong Min. Overloading on this right hand side, nobody out to the left. Intricate handling may be a problem, but they're going to try. Pull these Fijian defenders out of place. This game just stalling really at the moment. Getting no flow to it at all. Fiji trying to work away with the Rocco Uno. The offload is there from Sabu. Moving it out wide. But the uh, defenders get back, but then Rocco Uno is there in support. And finally, Fiji can get the second try and get a bit of dominance on the scoreboard at least. So well worked there in that phase of play by Fiji. Staying patient in defence, lots of urgency. Then they force the turnover and Rocco Uno just staying alive around that right edge for the offload. That's impressive stuff and really impressive considering their tackle completion rate from yesterday was 58% and we just saw previously with the stats of this game up in the 80s. That's really, really impressive and an improvement from yesterday's performance for Fiji. A credit to them. And far more aggressive, far more proactive defence than maybe we saw yesterday. Yeah, not switching off as well, staying alive. Once a tackle's made, get back straight on your feet and let's go to the next job. That You can see that's been a part of their game plan in this match. Yes, the words from uh, Bull Fully. Obviously been taken on board by his new charges. Big changes off the bench for these final two minutes. That's an artist, Sabu. Takes the appreciation of teammates as she sits out. As Fiji can, it would appear, prepare for another Challenge Trophy final. China appeared in the Challenge Trophy final in Dubai before Christmas and they beat Spain 12 points to seven. It doesn't look at the moment like they're going to be able to 
repeat that positioning. A little show and go from Chen Ming. Trying to get a bit more vibrancy into this Chinese attack. Messy attack, and again, China just being suffocated okay. inside their own 22. Credit to Fiji, but sometimes China not being their own worst enemies. Yeah, and suffocating is the right word. Fiji are just being relentless, so urgent in their defense. Their line speed off the line is absolutely terrific in this second half. And China showing some exciting things in attack, but just forcing those long passes. We say it time and time again, in the wet, it's too hard, especially when their skills aren't really up to the standard of those of the top playing teams that can afford to throw those 20, 30 meter passes. They're better off throwing some angles, hitting some short lines, some switches. Okay. Late tackle being picked up by the officials. Okay. Okay. Number two. This Stop. game really is stuttering to a conclusion. Ranong Ting coming on for the Chinese. But is it too little, too late now as we work inside the last 75 seconds of this match? Again, Fiji up hard and fast. Lavinia Tinai working the ball back, but I think she might be seeing yellow for this. Intentional knockdown, risk and reward. Didn't pay off that time for Fijiana. China know that they need to get up 80 metres very quickly if they're at to have any chance of staying in this game now. Getting width on the ball, but not making much headway. Ran Hong Ting. Well, Fiji won't mind right now because they're in Chinese territory, but still working hard into the last 30 seconds to make sure that their opposition don't glimpse the opportunity. Holding on. And there's the reward for their endeavors. Time. Yeah. Well, you can see how awkward it's Number been five, for both five. these teams trying to stitch together momentum into their attack. Thank the you. game has, as I say, stuttered along. The best rhythm has come from those drums. Well, I'm not sure that uh, Nangasau realizes which half she's playing in. Yes, she does. She was heading for an own try there, but she doesn't mind. She knew the clock was winding down. And it's going to be deja vu from 12 months ago here in Sydney. The Challenge Trophy final will be England against Fiji, China up against PNG in their final placing match later on this afternoon. So, time for the first cup quarter-final, and over to Ricky Swanell. Ricky. New Zealand against Canada. The first cup quarter-final is a repeat of the last World Seven Series final matchup. That was in Dubai, where New Zealand beat Canada for the title. Charge out to Spotless Stadium. Vocal contingent of New Zealand supporters, the Canadians will be desperate to bounce back on their poor end to day one. New Zealand with their strong starting lineup. Tui Hiranee Fitzpatrick Waka, Williams Blythe, and Nathan Wong. Tyler Nathan Wong has been in excellent form so far, leading point scorer in the competition to date here in Sydney. And Ricky Swanell, Tiana Pinatani with me. Well, Canada, they've been the team that's really pushed New Zealand close, but how do they cast aside yesterday and pick things up today? It's all about attitude for me, Ricky. It's tough when you finish as poor as they did yesterday in their pool games, but you've got to wake up on day two and be ready to perform. And 
Well, it's no easy task coming up against New Zealand. They've played 17 times. New Zealand's won 15. Canada once, and they've drawn once. Canada last one in Sao Paulo back in 2016. So I don't know what it is that they're going to have to bring out today, but New Zealand do look like a strong outfit in particular. As you mentioned, Tyler Nathan Wong. I'm excited to see Gail Broughton with the ball in hand. I think she's been outstanding this weekend. But for Canada, Brittany Benn is going to need to lead from the front in this match and Bianca Ferrella, their top finisher. Tyler Nathan Wong to start the first of the women's quarterfinals. New Zealand in their traditional black. Canada all in red. And it is Brittany Benn who soars high. First of all, batted down on the Canadian side, but a knock on. Early error for Canada will give New Zealand first attacking possession. Well, just an awkward pod there with Charity Williams and Brittany Benn. Canada usually really good with those aspects of the games, their scrums, their lineouts and restarts, but yesterday 17% restart retention. Bind. Set. So New Zealand's back line stretched out to the left. Michaela Blythe far left. That's where they'll look to get it through the hands of Niall Williams trying to go crashing up through the middle, driven into the ground and a solid tackle by Ben Hidani. Waka, not much room to move for Stacey Waka, but she gets the right foot step there. Good tackle in the end by Crossley, who stayed with Waka for New Zealand. Through the hands, Fitzpatrick. It is greasy and slippery out there. They just have to settle and reset. It's gone out the back. Blyde will have to go back and tidy up. So New Zealand have lost 20 odd metres here. But Blyde will just try and accelerate through the gap. Great defence from Canada, though, to bring her down on halfway. And an excellent steal. Julia Greenshields made the tackle, turned over the ball. And here's room for Charity Williams. New Zealand's defence at sixes and sevens. They're going to have to scramble. Ruby Tui showing it towards the sideline. Williams cuts back in field. And it is Tui who brings her down. And gives away a penalty. Fitzpatrick locked in over the ball. Hidani ups the pace. Hidani has Williams in support, looks to find her veteran teammate. The two old girls combining for New Zealand. Long passage of play and another penalty. Two in a row against Canada, and it's once again Hidani who taps, skips through one, goes herself. Barella chases her, drives her into the ground up to the 22. Great hands, Fitzpatrick, and the ball inside for Tui. It was a long, patient build-up. A couple of penalties got New Zealand downfield, and Ruby Tui opens the scoring. New Zealand opening this quarter-final, really making a statement. And Ruby Tui comes away with the points. But how do you even defend that? You're on the back foot, Canada. You're having to make cover tackles. Hidany takes one for the team, offloads it off the ground. Fitzpatrick keeps it alive. Ruby Tui's there in support. How do you defend that, Ricky, honestly? Canada had them on the ropes. They'd made the turnover, bust down field, and they've just turned around and made them pay. Got to take your opportunities when you get down that other end of your Canada. Kick conversion was away from Tyler Nathan Wong. So Ruby Tui puts New Zealand first on the score sheet. Points to nil. Shallow restart is just going to go the 10, and Waka's got that down on New Zealand side. Great leap by Stacey Waka, sliding into the pass. Fitzpatrick, Nathan Wong, and here's Williams trying to work this left hand side back in field. Williams, she'll just go head down into contact, but it's a good hit from Farella and Greenshields. Losing the ball was Williams. Crosley straight through the middle. Oh, this is rugged. Tough defence from both teams. Heavy contact. Penalty advantage for Canada. Ben skipping away from the tackle of Hidani. She's got Landry wrapped up by Walker. They'll go back for the penalty though. Landry tap and go. Goes quickly. Going straight through the middle. Landry. Bodies flying everywhere as they slide around. Penalty against Hidani. Ball wasn't out. She thought it was. New Zealand skipper. He's got a timing wrong. Canada want to take it on quickly. Maleski, Kayla Maleski. Oh, skidding and bouncing and using the referee as a shield was Julia Greenshield. Maleski clears. Trying to get Farella into the game. She's the game breaker for them. Nice real touch for Bianca Farella. 
edge towards the 22. Landry trying to chip it through. She's the one chasing. Nathan Wong is back there, though. Good tackle, Landry. And a loose ball sits there for Canada. Crossley swoops on it. New Zealand's defence under pressure again. Canada have got numbers. The rush of blood, though. Varela goes to tidy up. They'll still retain the ball, but I think they've left one go, Tiana. They were so lucky to get possession back from that. Very clever play there from Ghislaine Landry to kick the ball through the middle. See that Tyler Nathan Wong is isolated, gets to her feet, releases. Clinical tackle there and the support. But just losing that ball, they're lucky to get the feed for the scrum here. Oh, she's just got everything, hasn't she, Number Landry? Six, so smart. Number six, Red. All-time leading, uh, leading point scorer, rather. Same off. Charity Williams gets a rest. It's 26-14 when these teams played in the final in Dubai. Varela, great ball off the top. Here is Landry. Ben just had to check her run a little bit. So Landry goes herself. And the Canadian captain, the little wizard, goes in under the posts. And a very well-deserved try for Ghislaine Landry. Could have been a disaster. Looked like Ben ran into the, the same hole as Landry, but she said, no, nah, I've got this covered. I'll do it myself. You can see they go for the short ball. Ben just trying to bounce on the outside of Broughton, but Ghislaine Landry, too quick, too smart. Shows and goes herself. Her acceleration off the mark, too, is probably one of the best in the game. Doesn't look like it on screen sometimes, but she just goes from 0 to 100 on the spot. And she converts to put Canada ahead in the quarterfinal. Seven points to five. Canada lead New Zealand. Just over a minute to go in the first half. She'd give away, but he's pacing a little bit down that sideline, isn't he? he? Usually sits pretty impassive. Restart looking for the height of Crosley, knocks it down, or Nicholas able to control it. So Canada trying to build some momentum here. Gap opening up for Greenshield. Fitzpatrick comes back at her, and Tilly it takes two New Zealanders to bring down Julia Greenshield's Ben. To Landry and here's Varela working in midfield. There's not a whole lot of room there for Kaylee Lucan. And they're holding her up now. New Zealand, she gets to ground. Will be New Zealand ball. Good defense. And clever play there from the New Zealand defense to identify the ball. Gets her knees to ground, and Tyler Nathan Wong comes away with possession. Time here for New Zealand before the break. If they can build from inside their own half. Canada's defence has been Five. resilient so far. Set. Putting the shove in, it's there for Nathan Wong. Broughton. Broughton will always try and take them on with their footwork. She needs some support. It's there from Fitzpatrick. And her playmaker, Nathan Wong. Hit any Surging over to the left, trying to get Michaela Blyde into it. Instead, she goes herself, Sarah Hibbany. Is she going to have to gas to get there? Luke and Chase, she's got Blyde in support. Good hands from Blyde. And then the backup comes from Nathan Wong. Back to Blyde. New Zealand pressing here after the halftime hooter. Brought him. And now Tui. She's got Shakira Baker with her. Baker, this powerful winger on the outside, is driven towards the sideline by Pirella. Canada scrambling. Now it might break open for Broughton, though. Here's the step. They're well aware of the danger. Fitzpatrick, New Zealand, maintaining possession. The offload game. Blyde, she's got Nathan Wong outside. Her chops in field. Blyde clinging on as Lucan. And then ball in the hands of Nathan Wong. She still can't get there. Brilliant defence, and it finally cracks. They threw everything at the, the New Zealanders. Eventually, Sarah Hidney got there, and it may have come at a cost. Tyler Nathan Wong doesn't look like she's in a good way, but incredible efforts from both teams here. New Zealand to keep the ball alive edge to edge, and Canada just tracking their defense, but oh, so unfortunate there for Greenshield going for almost a netball intercept. 
And Hidney, she started it. She did the hard work on that left edge, went all the way back to the right. Michaela Blight keeping the ball alive here in contact. Leg drive, gets the offload away. And an awkward tackle there between Green Shield and Nathan Wong. So Nathan Wong is hobbling towards the sideline. She, of course, is the kicker as well. So the conversion was away. Ball short. And now New Zealand go 10 points to seven down, and they might have lost their playmaker. Canada 7, Tyler Nathan Wong has hobbled to the bench. New Zealand playmaker, Roy, she is up on her feet, so things looking a little brighter. Canada, can they be the team to break New Zealand's winning streak? So Katalina Futter Simpkins is out there now in jersey 8 for New Zealand, replacing Nathan Wong. Drives the kick down towards, again, Carolyn Crossley just being superb for Canada. And here they come, and coming quickly to start this first half. Landry again, shadowed by Tui, and just forced an ugly pass from Landry. Snaffled up by Baker for New Zealand. Broughton, Fitzpatrick, and here is Futter Simpkins. She's got lots of different tricks in her sleeve. She's kicked ahead for herself, Futter Simpkins. They're chasing the Canadians are coming at her. Futter Simpkins trying to hold them up. Finds the support in the form of Fitzpatrick. New Zealand have busted out. Brought in a rare handling error from her, but it's gone backwards and now they'll set. And she'll step and she'll go herself. Brought and where's the support still going? Here it is in the form of Blyde. It might open up here for Blyde. Canada again hustling, scrambling. Then goes at her once more. And Fitzpatrick in support. The support play of New Zealand is just outdoing some outstanding Canadian defence. And that's a really classy effort here from New Zealand to keep the ball alive. We heard at half-time Ruby Tui preaching patience, and that's exactly what they've done. But fresh legs, an injection of energy here from Fata Simpkins to identify no sweeper in the defensive line for Canada. She puts a little chip in, gets it herself, stepping and weaving, and then Fitzpatrick in support there. Awesome work rate. But the patience here, Gail Broughton, the ball goes to ground. She steps back, resets a few little dummies here, does what she does best. And Michaela Bly to stay alive there, keep the ball alive. Go into contact, comes so close to the try line. But Fitzpatrick again gets her third touch in this phase of play. Just outstanding from the Kiwis. And the conversion from Futter Simpkins, who started it all. They strike first after half time, 17 points to seven. Ball finds open territory, all allowed to bounce. Crosley, who's been impressive in this game. Charity Williams back out there trying to get around the outside of Baker, who clung on to her well. Crosley. No hands. Then clears. All the hands for Nicholas. And Lucan and a good wrap around Nicholas as she got Farella in space. She has. What can Bianca Farella do here from 80 metres out? Skips through one, skips through two, just loses her footing, goes again and then gets hammered into the ground by Williams. 
but she's put Canada on the front foot. Oh, the pass, though. Even the skills of Landry can't take that. And unfortunately for Canada, it's been a common theme this whole match for them. They've had so many opportunities to capitalise from, and they keep just shooting themselves in the foot, handing easy possession over to New Zealand, who have a 100% completion rate at the moment. Super unlucky. The pass was at her ankles. What was she supposed to do? The ball's wet. Yeah, on the half volley. Correct. What it means is that New Zealand five, are five metres inside Canadian set. territory. With a 10-point lead. Still plenty of time in this one, though. Williams. Glide. Again, just had to check her run. Sits there nicely for Fitzpatrick, one of the New Zealand try scorers. Hitherney stands and waits. New Zealand, they don't mind going backwards. It's Futter Simpkins hits a good tackle, and this is going to be Canadian turnover ball. It was too static from New Zealand. Again, a ropey old pass. This time Landry scoots it up, shipping ahead from herself. There's nobody back there, too. He's going to be the chaser. All oh, the football skills aren't quite there for Landry. Baker's thrown it up to no one. Hit and he cleans up for New Zealand. They're under pressure again, the black line. Through the hands of Fitzpatrick and over the goal line. She's had to force it. And they're going to have a scrum five metres out. Are you here there? Go G. That's Gail Broughton bringing the razzle as Gail Broughton trots back out onto the field for New Zealand. And the Canadian give Kaylee Lucan another breather. This is setting the tone for the quarterfinals and the knockout games for the rest of the weekend. Set. Yeah, in for a treat. Some pressure on New Zealand. Williams is scragged by Broughton. Going a little bit backwards at the moment, and New Zealand's blown through, but there was a knock on on the ground. Oh, lucky for the Canadians. Super lucky. The urgency here from New Zealand. Try line defense from Hedini. A great clean out there, but a slight little knock on from New Zealand gives Canada possession again, 10 metres off their try line. Still there for Canada. Crutch. Time starting to press Fight. against them, though. Into the final Hold. 90 seconds. Broughton's ready to go at Williams again. This time Williams clears nicely. Ben in midfield, one-on-one -on -one with Williams. Staff to put down. Brittany Ben skips out of the tackle of Niall Williams for New Zealand. Green Shields busting tackles. Blythe coming back at her. They take her down eight metres short. Canada pressing. Need to make the most of it. Ben, who has just been a tyro. Nicholas. And Crosley's hit and hit hard by Hidani. She's going backwards. Ten odd metres. That's a massive hit from the New Zealand captain. Ben's got Broughton. Can't get out of that one. Brittany Ben, but there's a penalty. Someone's just coming a little bit high. Landry. Has just gone too quickly, knocked it on. And the face says it all. You can see New Zealand have it mentally over Canada here. And Landry doing everything she can to try and speed up the game. Oh, such an uncharacteristic error there from Gislaine Landry. But the hard work coming in the form of Hirani, making her one on one tackles, getting. Canada on the back foot, stopping their momentum and forcing them to try and think of pull something out of the hat. And it forces an error. Set. New Zealand have got 36 seconds to see this out. They've been pushed and pushed hard. Got to finish it off. Oh, Williams holding on. Farella has just been tenacious, tracking across field with that blinding speed. Nicholas rushes up on Baker. Hole there for Shakira Baker if she can take it. But again, 
Farella. Pedini, siren goes. They just need to either get rid of it or get one more. They want to keep playing New Zealand. Glide. There's an ugly old pass, and it might be Futter Simpkins who will send it high out over the stadium sideline. It's spotless in Sydney, and New Zealand's record remains spotless, but only just. An almighty quarterfinal, and New Zealand progressed to the semis, 17 points to seven. Well, the bar is high, no question about that. Who is going to face New Zealand in that semi-final? Russia against the USA. First time they've met this season. Russia looking to reach a cup semi-final for the first time since Sydney last year, when, of course, they defeated the USA in 1914 in that quarter-final. USA, well... Great to see Christy Kirsch making the starting seven. She really has done an awful lot this weekend on her debut and really impressed. Obviously, Coach Chris Brown enough. There she is wearing 12. No Elona Mar. She's out of the weekend having had that ankle problem. For Russia, well, it is a familiar seven. Again, you always look to Hamid over wearing five and the skipper. Mikhailsova, they had they had a great start finish yesterday. Can they continue today? Familiar face, Joy Neville on the whistle, one of the uh, most high-profile referees now in the game of rugby. This is going to be a humdinger. You get the feeling. Lolly Waterman alongside me. Who's your pocket money on? I'm going to go with America, but this is speed on speed, so I am really looking forward to who steps up. Indeed, it is going to be who steps up and who gets going, who finds their rhythm, their pace as early as possible. As I say, Russia finishing so well yesterday against the other North American team, Canada. One draw, one loss, and a win yesterday for Mikhail Sova's side as she strides away up to halfway. For the USA, well, okay, they recovered well as well, touch. having been Option smacked liners. in the face Our by stop. Spain. Then to beat the hosts, Australia, in the penultimate match of day one was a real, real big statement. It was, but they kind of both had a mixed day with losing two games, well, one game each, that they really should have won, uh, with Russia losing to Fiji and USA to Spain. So they had a bit of a mixed bag, so I'm sure they've had a good talking to from their coaches and we'll see different teams today. See, so, Naya Tapa making a little bit of history yesterday in that game against Australia. Getting past Victoria Follian's record and great to see a message from her on social media last night. But it's all about the future now for Tapper and Co. As Russia get their first visit into enemy territory. Kukina. Out to Bistrova in that playmaker role before Lushina changes the option. Hammered over. Good anticipation. Oh, and getting past Favesi. Well, Hammered over opens the scoring. But the USA will be frustrated with that flank defence. Kamadova is one of the hardest players to tackle on this circuit because she's got a rangy run, a good handoff and strength, but you'd expect that tackle to be made from this USA side. I like the way that Lushina found the space in behind, though, and a good start for Russia. Yeah, kiss on the ball just to make sure 
she was going to save in the moment. And why not first try of the weekend for Bizat Hamadova. Unable to maximise it on this occasion, but a good fillip for the Russians to get them going. Third time these two have met here in Sydney. As I say, Russia victorious in that quarter-final clash and then losing out to Canada Thank you. in the bronze medal Thank match. You. Ultimately. So, a good start for Andre Kuzan's crew. Difficult pick-up for Cheta Ember, did really well there. That was a, an awkward ball that was coming through. Tap up. Advantage not, no, not a sympathetic pass to uh, Graeme Diaz there. Just the angle of the run there from Tapa, not leaving any space for Jordan Gray Matias to work. And the moment is gone for the women's Eagles. Big psychological plus so far for Russia. There's the try scorer, Hamidova gives it back, and it's. Uh, a huge wide pass for Mikhail Soba up against Tapper. Stand and go. Tapper up to the task. Serena. Lucino almost uh, teasing defenders out of place. Goading them on. Hamidova so strong again. This time not, not quite on the same page as uh, Bistrova, but Bistrova showing. Good Touch determination first. to try and work that flank position. Blue. Here. There's the bench for the USA. Elona Marr, as I say, hurt her ankle in the first game yesterday, so she's uh, not going to be a part of the group for today. I'm on, please. Tapper takes a breather. The pass goes, the throw goes skew, and Russia going to try and make the most of it. Nick out over though, of all people, not unable to handle the greasy ball, and it is greasy. We've had quite a bit of rain this morning, and uh, inevitably that film on top of the surface will affect the handling. Yeah, not great handling there, but a very interesting choice from USA in these conditions to do a back ball in the line out. Those are, those are hard throws as it is. Um, yeah, interesting. They were obviously worried about Kamadova's height and the lift that Russia can do in terms of competing in the air at set piece. Well, here's another set piece as Farvesi feeds and has to slap it back. That's a messy feed, and in the end, Lauren Doyle unable to pick that up cleanly. Pressure from Russia coming on to the USA inside their own 22, just where the Russians want to be. Yeah, you want Farvesi just to fall on that. If it's if it's a clean strike out and she can't get her hands on it, there's no point shoveling a pass along the floor. Just clear it up because now Russia have got a great attacking opportunity. Lushina scragged around the base by uh, Haviland. Hand it over. Again, that piston handoff. Just making a little bit of space. Space that's trying to be utilised by Baranchuk. Serenina back inside to Kukina. Ball just going That's forward. Forward. One minute to half time, but it is a big minute in the context of this match already. Most definitely. If Russia get on the on the scoreboard again, it's gonna be a really hard second half for, for the USA. But I love their determination. There was some good offloading from Russia. USA got in their face and, and scrambled right by the try line. So the USA having to go from deep, a kick is you know, almost sitting up for Mikhail Sova, an odd choice of exit play. 
passing not quite going to hand and the USA working their way quickly out of their 22. No, stay three. Hand it over again. Advantage four wide upside. Ostrova determined to try and four. get through the contact. Not making much headway, so referee Joy Neville calls them back. There's the half-time hooter. Last play of the first half. And a big play in prospect from the Russians. OK, let's go, please. Machina just getting the call from her teammates. Change of option from Seredina. Bounce of the ball works for Russia, but Advantage. not quite pulled in by Berenchuk. First, and second. the moment is gone. So there's half time in this second quarter final in the Sydney Sevens. Looks like Chris Thomas is going to struggle there, but at the half time, it's Russia leading courtesy of that solitary try from Hamadova. Five points to nil, they lead. Поймайте мяч. Смотрите, если не продавливаете линию, не подкидывайте, потому что все на месте они нажимают. Как только продавливаете, завтра вы уходите. Если есть возможность, подкидывайте. Нет, быстро построили рак. Ширина залетает, девочки. Либо через пресс разворот, либо мост вот так разгляд, на него уводить. Потом либо перебегать, либо по месту сыграть обратно. Дорожите мячом, также завладейте мячом. Давай на тот поем. 7 минут. 7 минут очень важно. Contrasting huddles from Russia and USA there. Chris Brown saying, make it matter. It'll be very interesting to see how the first exchanges go in this second half. Some nice positive chat from Havland as well. A couple of smiles. It's always good when you see players enjoying themselves. It shows when they play. But also that's all the training that you do. It's so tough for such a short hey, amount what? of minutes in big stadiums. It's such a great crowd. Some great fancy dress in the crowd. My favourite on the way in, a man holding a blind man's stick and wearing a shirt that said referee on it. Yeah, the old ones are the good ones. Good to see everybody loving this year's HSBC Sydney Sevens. Haviland. Tap up. Back off the bench to start this second half. USA trying to work position from inside their own half, but uh, Miovitsa unable to take cleanly. Yeah, Havland urging her teammates to up it. There's bits of Ak after a, a four year absence, came back into the 15s in the autumn. And uh, her last sevens action was actually in Guangzhou, uh, in Atlanta, I beg your pardon, 2015 16 season. So. Coming back to make a difference. Ah, oh, Again, unable to control the ball. Simple, unforced errors from the Russian captain. It's really frustrating errors in games like this, but the pressure is on. It's only 5-0 at the moment. But you've got to focus on the detail of the catch and pass when the ball is a little bit slippy. Favesi with a better release from the scrum that time. Tapa controls the ball at the second time of asking. Emba. Havilland sets it back. 
Farvesi almost overruns it, but looks like the USA keen to explore down this left flank. Knock on first. Let's knock on. Russian hand knocking the ball on is going to give a USA put in. It's interesting Russia are defending with a flat seven. They're giving a huge amount of space in behind for the, the Americans to potentially kick through. But they're clearly worried about the, the speed that they've got with Naya Tapper on this edge by giving them minimal space in the front line. Lauren Doyle trying to work the ball as quickly as possible out to Tapper. Mikhail Sover aware of the danger from the USA number seven. It's up, Haviland out to Christy Kirsch. Kirsch has scored in every game she's played in this weekend so far. How her teammates would love her to score right now. Put themselves back into this mix. Mix. After push. Passing not quite accurate enough there. Haviland having to reboot the attack. Turnover was almost there. Well, good work from uh, Christina Seradina. Injury, time off. USA struggling to really fire their attack. Is that a problem for the USA or is that credit to the Russian defence? I think it's a little bit of both. I don't think the USA's handling is good enough and crisp enough at the moment to exploit the spaces um, that Russia that they're earning by going edge to edge. But Russia, as I mentioned, are going seven up, so they're giving it. They're giving the USA more work to do in the front field. I'd like to see USA kick through and back their pace in a scramble defence from Russia. Well, the USA are used to relative success in this tournament, never been lower than fifth in Sydney. Going to have to work oh, hard sorry, now sorry, to try and make sure that they can get through these quarters. Yeah, Tap off it and able to return, or is she coming off? Looks like she's, yeah, she's going to exit. We just wait for 30 Time on. Four minutes, or just okay, under four please. minutes left on the clock with that solitary score from Bajak Hamadoba in the first half to separate the two teams. White. Crowd beginning to really fill now as they get, for many of them, getting their first dose of the women's tournament this weekend. Daria Lushina. Last line out went a bit squint. This one is going to hang nicely, but it's going to fall into American clutches. Just waiting for the time. Jordan Gray Medias. Good up front defense from Christina Seradina. Good leg drive as well. Forcing Kirsch back. Emba. Changes the option using her footballing skills. Mikhail Sova can't cover the bouncing ball. It ricochets left, right, and centre. With the game stalling at the moment, with being stuck inside the middle third of the pitch, but of course, there's only one team that will be happy with that, and that's the Russians. At the moment, yes, I actually think. Joy has got that wrong. I, I think Mekhart Sova, the ball squirted out forward from her. Russia, Russians have got away with that one. But I like to see that USA are changing and mixing it up from an attack perspective. Because like you say, they're just stuck in the middle part of the field and not really going anywhere. The Strova. Trying to get things away as uh, Mikhail Sova puts boot to ball, and that is a, another unforced error. She is not having a good weekend. She missed a try yesterday, got over the line and dropped the ball. And the unforced error is very unfamiliar from uh, the Russian skipper today. For me, that was quite a poor decision. 
they need to keep the ball in hand. They're, they're big, strong runners, do the damage. And she's just gifted America a really good attacking opportunity. They go short at the line out. Kramer-Diaz releasing Ember. Doyle, good step from the co-captain into the Russian 22. They've got the advantage for that high, high. high call. Kramer-Diaz trying to catch Russian sleeping. Gets the offload. And it's there, Cheter Ember. Cheter Ember is there. She equalizes the try. Now, can they go ahead with the conversion? Really nice support line from Cheta Ember, but talk about power. Gray Madias had three Russians on her and her legs were still pumping. Got her hands free, offload. Maybe very lateral, that pass. A nice finish. That's a PC term to say you thought it was forward. A very close call, wasn't it? Well, the official's right on the spot. And uh, it's been around. Let's take a look and see. Well, there you go. A big kick now. The conversion has gone over. So the USA take the lead as the final hooter goes. What can Russia do now? to change the outcome of this game with the last play of the match. Hammered over. Soaked up so much USA pressure, but now they've got to find their attacking wings once again. Stuck in that corridor on the far side. USA numbering up and taking the ball. Haviland slams it clear. USA will take their place in the Sydney semi-finals. Coming from behind to win at the death. USA the victors, seven points to five. Well, we've had two cracking quarterfinals to start with. Let's see whether Ireland and Spain can repeat the feat. Over to you, Ricky. Oh, no pressure for Ireland and Spain and a bit of history on the line here for Ireland in particular. They have never made a cup semi-final, but they've been one of the front runners here this weekend. An exciting young team with explosive game breakers like Hannah Tyrrell and Amy Lee Murphy Crow mixed in with their hard workers. Speaking of hard work, you don't need to go any further. That, that entire Spanish 12 led by Marina Bar Bravo and Barbara Pla. Patricia Garcia, their playmaker. This is a tenth time for these teams. Spain have only twice ever been in a semi-final. Ireland have never done it before. What a moment it would be for each of these sides. Nolly Waterman, it'd be a bit of nerves, a bit of tension. They've had to wait and watch these other quarterfinals. Now they get their turn. I love this matchup. I think it's a great opportunity for two teams that have done well on day one. They've got experience across the board with the likes of Barbara Pla and Patricia Garcia in Spain and Hannah Tyrrell with Murphy Crow as the leading try scorer on day one of four tries. I think noticeably the stat for me that is standing out is Ireland re regained 40% of their restarts. So this is going to be a critical start for Spain. Amy Perrett, referee from Australia to take charge of the third quarter finals. New Zealand and USA already through on the other side of the draw. This is the penultimate. Ireland against Spain. Lucy Mulhall, the Irish captain, sends it high and it's taken down by Leda Urfina, the younger of the two sisters. First possession for Spain. Let's see what attacking intent they have. Bravo, the captain, takes it down into the hands of Pla. And across the face, Urbina, Pla again, getting it back. Nice defence early on from the Irish. Echibari is always dangerous, spins out of one, links up with Urbina, couldn't handle the pass though. 
No turnover from the Spanish making the early error. Unfortunate there with the handling oh, error, but I love the intensity that Spain have started this game. They're moving around, they're supporting, they're working hard off the ball because you have to try and create numbers in sevens. There's only a few of you on such a huge field. So it's a great energy and unlucky in that handling error. Great shot of the tension and anxiety on the faces of the people who have to just sit and watch the opening stages waiting for their turn. Find. Set. Malcolm. Higgins on a tear. Skipping away. The Spanish players are falling. She sends a beautiful ball out wide to Murphy Pro. Back in field. Higgins buries the head. Puts the foot down. She started it. She finishes it. Eve Higgins. What a star. That is classy from Eve Higgins. She plays like with such a mature head. Simple pass, I love that, but backs it up. She doesn't give up, she stays active, she stays alive. Really, really lovely try from Ireland. Oh, it's easy to forget you're only watching a 19-year-old Eve Higgins. She plays, said Nolly, with a brain far beyond her years. She's strong, she's quick, and she's put Ireland in front. And Lucy Mulhall converts 7-0. Ireland over Spain. Center again, Back looking for the tall ground. timber of Tyrrell. It's landed there for the Spanish, and now they will try and break out to look in to tackle, respond immediately. Knocked down by the Irish, just to knock on five. in the tackle. But a penalty. Garcia will have a few words with one of her opposites and gets to go back and reset that tap. I think she was lucky there because she <laughs> lost control of it. Well, we saw that happen in the first quarter final at a vital moment. Garcia hasn't found touch. She's handed the ball back to Ireland here. So Mulhall will shape up, size up the options. And she goes to one of her power runners in Derville Nikavor and gets marched upfield with the high shot. Tyrrell in midfield. With Higgins outside. Higgins again wants to go up over halfway. Support is there from Murphy Crow. She sends Garcia one way, then the other. Urbina comes in at the last moment. Ireland on the attack again, playing at pace. Spanish defence is reeling. Little inside ball. Murphy Crow taken down, ridden hard off the ball. Was the Spanish defence, but they've done well to regather, regroup, and stop another Irish onslaught. Look at that step and go. She just makes it look so easy. She did cut left. The support was on her right. If she had taken the step off her left foot, it might have been try time for Ireland. But look at this from Garcia. She's like a ninja in the breakdown. She just whips it away without you even realising. Find. Set. It's an outstanding record. Emily Murphy Crow, yeah. she was the player on Let's the outside sure of Higgins. Shove comes in, but Garcia clears. Stations on her own goal line is Ichibari. Oh, Ireland just let them off the hook there. Side from the scrum. It's a very interesting decision for Spain. They gave Ichibari hardly any space to attack with. Um, and yeah, like you say, Ricky, let off the hook from just some too keen Irish defence coming offside. The highest Ireland has ever finished in a tunnel it was six. That was in Glendale in the first stop of the season. Steadily progress what it would mean to them to get into a semi final. But equally for this team, the Spanish trying to regain some of the form they showed last year as Leda Urbina rolls to ground. That's been knocked down and it's going to be a yellow card. 
Every player knows that mm. that just cannot be done. And now Ireland will go down to six. Clark, inside ball for Ichibaraya and Lida Urbina. Garcia, she's got her captain Bravo standing wide in midfield. Amaya Urbina, but that passes in front of and forward from Elizabeth Martinez. Do you want line out of scrum? Love, it's going forward. A basic error there from Spain. You've got to make the most of having six players in the defensive line in front of you. Ladies, just make sure you're finally buying onto the hooker. Oh, sorry, onto the props. Okay. Okay. Not the hooker, please. Okay. Crouch. Bind. Island, down to six Set. players, remember. With ball in hand into the final 30 seconds of the first half. It's there for Tyrrell standing behind the base of the scrum. All looked after by the Irish defence. Nicovard clears. Wrapped up by Leda Urbina. Urbina. Trying to make metres up the middle. His island. Nicovard. Nicovard slips out of one. They go back at her again. And Garcia and Clark bring her to the ground just up over the 22. Penalty island. Just a little bit. Ginger getting up. Tervil Nikovard, who's a jiu-jitsu and MMA specialist. Oh, you're okay. So I wouldn't you take her on. No oh, wonder she loves the contact. Yeah. Time Interesting tactics from Ireland doing, going back to their 15s route of pick and go. But to be fair, just short in numbers on a wet, slippy day. They've earned themselves a penalty. Sucking oh. up the clock two to half time with Anna McGann. You take it. Okay, in the sip in, and Lucy yes. Mulhall yep. is going to take a penalty kick at goal here from out in front. Great decision with time up. Lucy <laughs> Mulhall kicks the penalty and gives Ireland a 10 0 lead at the break. It's an unusual decision, but one that could prove important. And it's also two scores, so they put the pressure over onto Spain. Interesting, but I like it. I, I like that. and Spain go to their half-time huddle. The final of the quarter-finals will be up next. Australia, the home team against France. Oh, that Rugby World Cup 7s semi-final in San Francisco springs to mind. That last second try that broke Australian hearts. Of course, trying to defend their title here. That's the next quarter-final. Back inside Spotless Stadium. Ten points to nil. Ireland with a try and a penalty to give them a 10 nil advantage as we head into the second semi-final. <laughs> Spain need a response. Garcia to restart. Back off, Rudy. 
will take him down through the leads of Nikovod, so they have to trace back 20 metres out from their own try line. But have retained possession nicely in Mal Hall's spot. A little opening down the blind side for Lou Galvin, but quickly shut down Higgins. And the step away through is McGann back out of the Sinbin to start the second half. Ireland have their full complement of players. Cyril pumping the legs. Nice continuity here to start for Ireland as they throw themselves into the contact. We Getting a penalty to too. Yeah, Spain under pressure. That's okay. I should have communicated. My bad. Second go. Good to hear Amy Parrott there just saying, yep, yeah, my bad. Didn't quite get the communication right. Mel Hall finds touch just five metres or so on the Spanish side of halfway. Ireland would really like to press here and strike first after half time. It's interesting with the scoreline as it is, they've slowed it down, they've kicked to the line. In the first half, we saw tap and go, tap and go, tap and go, and the tempos. They're obviously thinking about how they want to see it. That's the, that's the difference, I think, with this Ireland side now that we're seeing on the series. They're that much better tactically, and they are producing some consistency as they miss the line out. As they miss the line out, of course. Welcome to the commentary curse, but it gives Spain a chance to try and get points on the board. Bravo takes a strong hit up, held on too long though. It was the little halfback for Ireland who was as ferocious and feisty as they come. Lucy Mulhall took on the far bigger player and came up trumps. Again, good tackle by her, by Clark. Mulhall stepping away through the line again. Higgins has just been a menace every time she's had the ball and she's still there again. Higgins just brought down by Neda Urbina at the right moment. Ireland have got some momentum though. Spain making their tackles but they're having to make plenty of them. Ireland it's there for Amy Lee Murphy Crow ghosting through a gap and Ireland do strike first after half time. Are they on their way to their first semi-final? Nice finish there by Murphy Crow, but I really love the build-up from the whole of the Irish team. They're getting in someone as soon as the tackle's made, the next person is there to clear out, and then they're shifting it away from the threat. Spain are doing well in defence, but here there's tired legs as the speed of Murphy Crow accelerates through the gap. So many quality finishes in the sport. She is one of them. Amy Lee Murphy Crow. Well up on the try scoring list. Conversion is good. 17 points to nil. to regather and it gives Higgins a chance to go through the middle again buries the head and burrows forward still pumping eventually taken down by Ichibaria Terrell spies a little gap there wasn't much room but Hannah Terrell's carved off another 15 metres for Ireland they've really got momentum now Spain having to scramble and scramble again Murphy Coe Crow for the corner she's there and that might just seal the deal for Ireland defence it means they have to hold on her and then Murphy Crow good leg drive and a little jump over the line she still had plenty of work to do didn't she Amy Lee Murphy Crow that celebration every time is it a cha ching moment or <laughs> or a toot toot the trainers are coming <laughs> she steamrolled through Conversion is away by Mulhall. 
Maybe starting to relax just a little on that Irish bench. Here's Hannah Tyrrell has a rest. 22-0. Two minutes to go. Brittany Hogan onto the field for Ireland in Jersey 4. It's just coming unstuck for the Spanish. They haven't really fired a shot at Ireland at the moment. through the hands as well. Lots of errors. The youngster, Maria Garcia, can't control that ball. And the high fives can hear just the energy from the Irish. It's a really nice performance from Ireland. Attack, they're, they're keeping the ball well. Defence, they're not panicking. They're making their tackles. They're holding their shape. And they're just giving Spain no opportunity to attack. They've got a winning record over Spain too, and knowing they can beat them, they beat them last time the teams played, it was a wee while ago, on the series at least, that was in Langford, Spain won it at the World Cup sevens, but I think they now know they're on their way. Higgins, it's a good hit in midfield on Aoife Doyle, but she's able to stand strong in the tackle and still deliver it out. Charging hard, aren't they? They want more, the Irish. Galvin it was that time. Higgins again. It's just taking every second ball at the moment, it seems. Nikovod. Dervil Nikovod. Always goes forward. Spain's defence still rushing up, but they've just had to make so many tackles. They've clocked up over 20 now for the game. Galvin digs in and clears. Ball was low, though. They'll play on and in instead going back for the knock on. It's low at the feet of Aoife Doyle. Yeah, not great pass to take that one. But fair play to the Spanish. They haven't given up. The scoreline suggests that they have no way back into this game. But they've defended well. And that's really important to take into your next game so that you do finish yep. matches on a high because it isn't great when you lose and you're out of a cup semi. That's what everyone dreams Five. of doing. But they, they can hold their heads Set. high for this last, uh, last part of the game. Well, Ireland were a standout team in Dubai on day one and they couldn't back it up on day two. They've been able to do so here even though Spain are going to try and break out. Maria Garcia still hustling the Irish. Kicking is the option. Who's the chaser? Beatriz Dominguez Sanchez. Did she knock on? Did she knock on? I think the call is play on. on. Came off a foot. Was able to hold on to it. So they might get something out of the semi, uh, this quarterfinal just yeah, yet. Thank you, advantage. Do Spain lead it? Avina trying Over. to skip through one, taking a couple with her, and she will have the last say. They might just check to see so think the, the grounding. I think it could be a try, yep. but I just want to check the grounding. Yes. Okay, Timo Clare, can you hear me? Uh, just try yes or no, please. She had a couple of people around her leader, Rubina, as she dragged them towards the line. Let's see. That looks pretty good to me. Straight in under the sticks. It won't matter, though. In the grand Amy, scheme of things. Award the try. Thank you very much. Spain score last. But it's been all Ireland. Yeah, they've made history, and deservedly so. They've been really consistent this tournament, and they've come out with an energy and an intensity that just Spain haven't been able to live with. Ireland go through to the semi-finals for the first time. They're absolutely elated, and it's richly deserved. They beat Spain 22 points to seven. Let's get, let's get straight in for reaction. Downstairs is Nat Yanidis. Yeah, thanks, Ricky. I've got the captain, Lucy Mulhall, down here. Lucy, what an incredible performance. Through to the semi-finals for the first time. What does this mean to the team? It means a lot. Uh, we've worked really hard the last couple of years, as have every team, but uh, 
we just came here this weekend. We wanted to do it for the girls at home. We have a really good bond between us as a squad and we've been working really hard together. So it's for just as it is for the 12 of us here and Katie Heff, the 13 man. It's also for all the girls at home who are awake in their beds watching this at like 4 a.m. <laughs> well, congratulations. Go enjoy it. Oh, thank you. Just who will they play, though? Islanders there. Will it be Australia or France? Over to Tiana Pinatani and Simon Ward. Well, we've permed three from six. We need the fourth. Is it going to be Australia? Is it going to be France? This one has just got everything written into it, Tiana, because there are so many variables, so many different clashes. You cannot wait for this one to start. No, absolutely, a huge game between these two sides. Australia looking to redeem themselves from yesterday's loss against USA. And as we all know, there is zero room for error in the quarterfinals. But for France, they need to shut down the likes of Emma Sykes, Ivania Polite, if they want to give themselves the strongest chance of winning this match and absolutely keep the ball out of the hands of the likes of Elliot Green, their try scoring go to. Teenagers Soraya Parkley and Lily Dick get in the call from John Menenti to start. There's the French lineup, familiar lineup with uh, Fanny Orta once again skippering the side. So, an intriguing clash of styles, of experience. Who is going to take this fourth spot? Ready? Tavita oh. Roccabrani, the man in charge of this one. Oh. Shannon Izar is going to be the first to make contact with the ball. Some big psycholo psychological challenges for both teams. Australia have won all 19 clashes between the two in the series, but the last time these two met was actually in San Fran when France won the semi final. Elia Green up hard and fast. Siafani trying to get outside Shani Williams. Great work from the Aussie skip. My goodness me, she needed to hold on there for all money. What a challenge from Elia Green. That is a huge play there from Elia Green, shooting out of that defensive line. That tackle needed to be made, but she sure caused a stir. Massive hit there on his arm. Doing what she does best, Elia Green. Right. That's a huge power play there. Bye. Just wonder on first Sit. instinct whether her feet were off the ground when that contact came in. Right. Hang on, come Let's on. Just yes. take a look here. Let's again. Okay, just well, make sure you're right. Crouch! Both feet off the ground. That's um, Bye. worth looking at again, but play goes on as Emma Sykes. Sit. Emma Sykes puts the ball in, and Australia get the first chance to try and link things together. The France physicality in the tackle has been huge to the way they play their sevens game. And that is something that Australia are going to have to work around. See if Arnie takes down Green on that occasion. Lay on. First lady on the ball. He's out. He's out going for glory early doors. That's great work. I think that was... Is that Politi? It was. What a surprise. Yeah, that's textbook stuff there from Politi and from Shannon Izzard to get the turnover. But Politi straight over the ball there. She sees a passive tackle, gets straight on the ball and forces that turnover. Caroline drew up, just uh, recovering her posture. But uh, Australia getting stuck inside their 22, having their defence tested up to the task so far. We can see that passive tackle there from Emma Sykes as she lies in the middle of the ruck, struggling to roll away, but that allows the space for Ivania Polite to be right on top of that ball, forcing that turnover. That's great work between those two. And Sykes has the ball That's slapped up from Fanny Orta. The French captain really has led by example in defence and attack. Yeah, borderline risk and reward there, but you can Crouch. see that hand was... Definitely an attempt to make Bind. a tackle. Okay. She's on top. She's on top. No, I, I have to be on top. Pal, just Sorry. trying to sort Crunch. out the, the bind here. Bind. That's uh, Soraya Parkey. 
the 17 year old who has the initials BG for big girl when she's training because that's how she wants to be that's the impact she wants to make Entry. well there's no holding back in the contact that's for sure Pleaty trying to release Parky there ball goes loose scrappy Quirk has to pick up the pieces Elia Green takes on her own 22, revs the engine and drives. That is a fabulous tackle from Drua. As important as Charlie Williams was on Siofani at the beginning, so Drua's tackle and Elia Green there. Two teams really trying each other out. Kaliti trying to release Parky. So now Parky gets the offload. Sight strides away from Siafani to get the first try. Huge Kentucky. moment for Australia. Well, we spoke about it pre-match. Keep the ball out of the hands of the likes of Ivani Apoliti and Emma Sykes, who both had a touch on that phase of play. But these carries from Elia Green really set the platform for, the, for that left edge. And the ball transition here, Vania Polite with a little dummy, Sarai Pucky taking it into contact, taking one for the team, and the support came in the form of Emma Sykes. She was instrumental yesterday on day one, 12 carries, three line breaks, and her restarting was pinpoint, but she shows us she can score tries as well. She can get conversions as well. Seven point return for John Mananti. Never easy for coaches Hold in the Stick to the plan. Situations, well, Happy with his lot thus far. These two teams do know each other well. Their strengths and weaknesses will be no surprise to either side. It's a matter of manipulating the game to make the most of a given circumstance. And Australia certainly did that for that first try. Quirk. And keep things moving. Politi. Kicks across. Elia Green. Quick to react. Good cover from Fanny Alta. Yeah, and a She's fair off penalty there. Off her feet is the call. Elliot Green just needed to stay kick. a bit more patient there. Fanny Alta was on the ground as she recollected that ball, and Elliot Green so eager to make that tackle, but can't tackle when the player's on the ground, so that's a fair call. Bit of push and shove here. Siafani and Green are going to have a battle in all sorts of conditions, aren't they? You just know it already. The two speedsters, but they like a bit of physicality too. Moving towards the final minute of this first half. And that try from Emma Sykes. The only difference between the two. Elia Green takes a breather. The ricochet works to Parky. Big tackle coming in from uh, Miles. Politi out to this near side to Tonegato. Good to see her back on the park. Get that shoulder off after San Francisco. Charlie Williams. Charlie Williams slowing her way through the French defence. Oh, the captain leading from the front. Smile, Shani, that's a bit special. What a huge captain's play there from Shani Williams, the veteran. So impressive through the midfield, doing all the hard yards. But Sarai Parkey again loves the physicality, and Shani Williams sees the opportunity at first receiver, dummies the ball off the left foot. Awesome stuff there from Williams. It's been a little while since we've seen her break through the midfield. She's usually the one in back play, making the big hits, doing her job, doing all the hard work for the outside backs, but she reaps the rewards this time. Awesome stuff there for William. Great work from the 30-year-old, getting the applause and respect of teammates and coaches alike. Deservedly so, and a big psychological plus for the hosts. Going into the halftime huddles, that is going to be well, may change no, the psyche, may change the mindset. 14 points to zip. Australia in front. France will need to find something as quickly as possible, preferably from their point before the break. Oh. 
Colin Easton. Gets things moving with the last play of the first half. See a funny. Good leg drive. Who's back? Pell. Neeson looking to explore that heavily populated short side. Drew out. Walter. Not trying to open things up on this right wing. And open it up they do. Shannon Izar sliding through. Brought to ground by Politi. Another important tackle. To start and end of the first half. But is it going to be the end of play? It's not. Carmen Eason gets France on the board. And my goodness me, Le Bleu needed that. Very well worked there from Carla Neeson, but the hard work came from Shannon Izar on the right edge. Taking on Shiny Williams one-on-one, -on -one. just got on the outside of her with ball in hand, as we can see here. Miscommunication from Ivania Politi and Shannon Williams, but Politi just makes that cover tackle. And it's the urgency from Neeson, at first receiver. As she throws that dummy, commits Pucky. So the bell tolls, but who is it going to toll for come the full-time whistle? At the turnaround, it's the host leading. Australia, 14 points to five up. Wonderful sight of the spotless stadium here in Sydney, ready for a half of rugby that is going to decide the final semi finalist. Well, David Cortex urging his team on how, my goodness, how much they needed that try from Carla Neeson. John Menenti, a different message six and a half minutes of domination. We need seven in the second half. Yeah, that's right. And he plays a fair point there with the domination for the next seven minutes. It has been a huge physical battle between these two sides, as it always is every time we see France come up against Australia. But Australia, they've just had ball in hand and they've had 100% attack completion, which has been evident on the scoreboard. Emma Sykes starting seven minutes that will decide the final semi-finalist tomorrow morning. Last and forward goal. Australia, of course, defending tournament champions, series champions, Olympic champions. Last year was so huge. The only team, male or female, that didn't see the point in the entire tournament, which is a quite amazing stat. You get the feeling psychologically there's a different feel this year. Yeah, a little bit. There's lots of new faces that are coming up through the ranks, obviously. They've got Emily Cherry that's missing, Charlotte Kazak that's missing, their co-captain Shannon Parry that's missing. So some opportunity for the younger players to come and make their mark on the World Series. But they were in fine form last year, obviously being Sydney Seven defending champions. France, of course, had a great year themselves, finishing third. Runners-up in the Rugby World Cup Sevens in San Fran as well. Quick transference 
to see a funny gets the support from Drew up easy and able to stop the ball carrier in France exploring options without making too much headway down the pitch Luigi picks up the scraps referee might have inadvertently got in the way there So Australia with the chance, we park in. Ball goes loose. France pick up with Izar. Izar trying to load to one side. Joao. Australia sticking to their defensive duties. Knock on. Bantes goal. Turnover from Alicia Quirk. Bantes takes over. the ball back. Out to Parky. The threat, the thrust is there. It's Lily Dick, the teenager, just 19 years old. And that is already one of the highlights on her showreel. What a try, what a big moment. Great vision there from the Aussies, and they stay patient in attack. There are a few loose passes, wobbly balls. But it's Lily Dick on the edge that reaps the rewards for Australia. And great heel there from Parky at centre position, but the patience there from Alicia Quirk in the midfield to reset, take one step backwards and think, right, we've got space, we've got the overlap on that left edge. And Lily Dick too powerful as she breaks through the contact for her third try of her career. And the initial burgle from Alicia Quirk at the breakdown, that's what set it up. You know, uh, Alicia Quirk, I should say. She did so much of the unseen work there that provided the ball and then was in position to play off it. Yeah, that's right. Orchestrating their defensive line. She talks a lot on the field and you can hear her through the ref mic when she's near the ref sometimes. I'm not sure if there's a moose loose about this hoose, but France really need to find a scramble now to get themselves back with the next score if they're going to compete come the final whistle. Siafani ranging around. But the offload is there, and Siafani really has got the appetite today. Release. Right, left, Blue. it doesn't matter. She's Sorry, appeared Blue. outside that first playmaker role. Guess what? Elio Green's on the park. Oh! One, two, three. Come on, Elio, get back to the third one. Fanny Orta just trying to settle her team down a bit. Getting stuck inside their own half and big physicality coming in from the Australian defence. Izar goes roaming. Neeson, try score at the end of that first half. Orta, Fanny Orta trying to release Sia Fanny, but ball doesn't find the target cleanly and France have to reboot the attack. But reboot it they do and Sia Fanny clears the tackle and gets... France back into this mix. You can just see the body language out there, how spent they are. But Australia suffocating France in defence. And Siofani just with the fend off there as she pumps her legs through and strides away. But you can just see how tired they are out on their feet, both teams. Just have a look at the impact of this lady. Elia Green, known for her speed. Oh, what, what commitment to defensive duties there. And she's done really well this weekend. Sometimes when you send a shooter out of the line and they miss that tackle, that leaves a huge open, unmarked space there. But Elia Green has been spot on every single time. So, 11 points, the difference. Just under two minutes to go. The choke tackles from the French girls. Get over, He's going to get more. the possession. Clever play there from Hands France up. to identify them all. Yeah. Took them all to ground and then they'll get the feet of the scrum. Joanna Grise coming in for Shannon Izar. Grise making her debut this weekend. Got the one of the tries, one of the nine tries they ran in yesterday against PNG. Had a really good day yesterday, France. 15 tries in total on day one. 
Set. Sit. with a handful of them. Looking at the short side. Torres Duxa sets the ball back. Advantage. Gets the call. Straight to the ground. Ball. France back understanding in, the urgency of the situation. Torres Duxan goes again. Away he goes. Runs into a brick wall, but lays the ball back. It's there again. Is it over? Valentin Lotto is another on. of the debutants. Hang on, hang on. Come on. Let's just have a listen to this conversation. Did you see a player rounding in England? I'm happy to get English. Okay, we'll check. Yeah. Clear, you up there? Yes, thanks. Thank you. Try or no try, please. Try or no try. Big moment, miss. Just. Yeah, on the midriff. The torso is good enough. Just wait till you're in the shot and then you can award the try. Thank you, Claire. Try. Down the gun. So right. the 23-year-old debutant pulls France a little closer to their hosts. This one's going to go to the wire. And it came off the back of the work from Dussant up the midfield to make a break through the line of the Australian defence and then the urgency knowing they're two metres off the line almost got a bit of white line fever there. Emma Tonegato, unfortunate, put her body on the line to save that try. It was centimetres in it. Here we go. Four points of difference. Under 30 seconds of regular time left. Australia need to hold on to the ball, need to keep possession of this game. Sykes, oh, a hand coming through from Joanna Grise. Risk or reward doesn't pay off there for France, and that's going to be... France down to six for the final stages of this game. Yeah, welcome to the seven series. As Chris said, you can't do that. Yeah, we've seen it a few times this Let's weekend. Go. Take a kick. Just going out for that intercept. Let's go. The half-half half attempt. Go. Emma Sykes slams it long. The whistle goes, the relief is palpable. Australia are in the semi-final. John Manenti is going to prepare his team for the Irish Challenge come tomorrow morning. What a match. Final score, Australia 21, France 17. Well, we always knew that was going to be tight. We always knew it was going to be exciting. It lived up to its billing. And uh, the Australian girls can draw breath now. They were pushed all the way. France really do not know when to stop. And those tries right at the end gave them that glimmer of chance. But the commitment of the likes of Elia Green was just immense. Let's get reaction from the Aussie camp. Nat, who have you got? Yeah, I've got Vani Paliti down here, Vani. It was going to be a danger game for you guys, but the girls have switched on from the get-go today. Yeah, we prepared really well this morning. We knew France are going to come out firing, so we knew we had to start off really well, and that's what we did. Elia looked ferocious to start that game. She really set the tempo for the team early, didn't she? Yeah, she's been phenomenal. She brings such great energy to the team, and we love having her out there. And now it's another semi-final in front of home fans. Just what does that mean to this side? It means so much to us, you know, we don't get this opportunity very often, so to have our friends and family here means absolutely well to us. Well, congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. Ivania Politi, happy, delighted, relieved, all in equal measure. Let's uh, take a look at what's coming as John Menenti just congratulates his team. They just fucking set a standard and everyone else just fucking lifted his head. Well, we saw you fucking happen and we all wanted that shot. And it was really, really impressive. Okay? And they got some good plays and they ran some good stuff at us. But we aimed up and showed courage. Right? And, and that courage is what's going to take us through the rest of the right? So let's enjoy the crowd for a bit. All right, 15 minutes. Okay, get around them. All right, then start. Let's mark our way back inside. Have a really good recovery. We've got our own home. Okay, not to be underestimated, not to be underestimated. All right, but they're, but they're, hey, they're coming to our house. All right, they're coming to play us in our house. All right, we're going to whack them. Okay, so well, John Menenti happy with his lot. That's because of that final result. There's the cup 
quarterfinals, New Zealand coming through. They will face USA in the semi-final. And then Ireland up against Australia in the second semi-final tomorrow morning. Well, the DHL impact player tracker shows a French name at the top, Shannon Izar, never far from the ball. Michaela Blyde, Megan Jones on her return to action for England, and Eve Higgins, the teenager, doing so much for the Irish cause that's taken them to their first cup semi-final. Well, the sun is shining on Spotless Stadium. It's shining on the women's rugby. Join us tomorrow morning for those cup semi-finals. Stepping inside, Emma Yurin. Eddie Burton slips a nice ball to Roland. And Lizzie Anna wants another one for England. Good tackle. But suddenly the break is there. And the ball inside for Tui. How do you even defend that? Valadry goes herself. The support player of New Zealand is just out doing some outstanding Canadian defence. Getting past Favesi, hammered over, opens the scoring. Ray Madias had three Russians on her and her legs were still pumping, got her hands free, offload, a nice finish. Beckenfield, Higgins buries the head, puts the foot down, she started it, she finishes it. Eve Higgins, what a start. Van Island do strike first after half-time and they on their way to their first semi-final.